Where are people planning to spend money in 2016? Which industries and which machine types? Watch this and you'll find out. Hello everyone and welcome to the MFG Advocate on IMTS TV. There are lots of questions about the economy right now and the answers depend on who you talk to. So today we're going to talk to Steve Klein Jr., the Director of Market Intelligence for Gardner Business Media. How are you today, Steve? Good. Thanks, Penny. So, you know, there's a lot of news globally, too, concerns out of China, concerns out of Europe, but what are the strong markets right now for manufacturing? So one of the strongest markets, I think, is Mexico. Um, we heard a lot of talk about that over the last day and a half at the Global Forecasting Conference. and. Uh, Mexico, whether it's automotive uh, production or aerospace production or the medical industry, uh, even dye and mold, there's uh, a lot of companies at the OEM level building factories and plants in Mexico, and now you're seeing a lot of the supply base as well uh, starting up. So we're seeing a very strong increase uh, in capital equipment spending in Mexico, which tells you that their manufacturing economy is, is quite strong. Uh, but then some of the Southeast Asian countries are still doing uh, quite well. And we don't necessarily think of those countries in the U.S. as being strong in manufacturing, but Vietnam and Indonesia and Thailand are, are doing quite a bit when it comes to manufacturing. So what's your take on what's going on in China? China, I think, is uh, really suffering from just an, an extreme bubble in, in all things construction uh, and investment, really. I mean, you look at the level of, of steel and concrete and the amount of railroads they've built, uh, whole cities that have been built that people aren't living in. Uh, there's just been a, an extreme amount of overinvestment, uh, really, to kind of hopefully bring people, I think, into out of the farm and into the, the city and manufacturing environment and, and a higher level of productivity. Uh, and doing that as rapidly as they did is uh, pretty unsustainable, I think. And so I think you're seeing now China suffer the, the effects of all that maybe misallocated investment, not always overinvestment, but just not putting the investment in the right place at the right time. All right, so, you know, kind of bringing us back domestically, there was a peak year in machine tool consumption in 2011. Um, so everything kind of since then is looking like it's low off when you're comparing it to those right. really peak numbers. So how does your forecast and your survey kind of look compared to that, and how can you put that in context for the actual level of where it stands? I think one of the things that we're seeing is that in 2011, in that run-up uh, of capital equipment spending, everything was doing well. It didn't matter the industry that you were serving. It didn't matter the product that you were selling. Uh, people were buying. So it was uh, being a seller of capital equipment was pretty easy at that point. I mean, you just had to have a machine available uh, to sell. Now things have kind of switched where the buyer is uh, more in control uh, of the process and so you have to be a little more targeted in what you're doing and certainly there's still some industries uh, that are doing well. Automotive is particularly strong. Aerospace is good and particularly the aircraft engine part of the market is very strong. That's where the new developments are happening. Uh, in aerospace, and then we still see some strength uh, in the pumps and valves and plumbing products, not necessarily directly related to the oil and gas market, but somewhat related uh, to that, so that's a particular area of strength, and even a primary metal, so machining bases of equipment or things coming from a foundry are particularly strong too. So it's a more uh, pocketed type of market, and you got to be more targeted in what you're doing. But it's not time to panic. No, it's definitely not time to panic yet. <laughs> well, that's good to hear. Okay, so there's a lot of headwinds also due to some lower oil prices and a stronger dollar, and probably to the average consumer, you know, those sound like good things. You know, that means cheaper gas, and that means your money can supposedly buy more, but in business that's not necessarily all that great. What do you think is going to happen with those challenges? Well, one of the things I think we have to keep in mind with oil and the dollar, and we can see that particularly over the last year, is that they can change direction very quickly. Uh, both of those metrics were moving in a direction that was positive for capital equipment for a year or two prior uh, to last fall. Uh, so we would have expected this year to be very strong capital equipment market based on that. And then we saw record rates of change in those two measures in just one year time period to where they had a dramatic impact on the business. And what you typically see when you look at any kind of metric using a rate of change is that the rate that it either goes up or down is the rate that it goes up or down. So they tend to move in symmetrical 
way. So we could probably expect a fairly similar movement down uh, in the dollar and a fairly similar movement up in the price of oil. Now the question is the, the timing of that and when that happens, but since we've seen such a rapid movement, we're likely to see something fairly rapid to get us more back to a normal uh, environment. So your, for, your forecast specifically looks at machine tool consumption, which is kind of an interesting indicator of you know, economic activity and maybe one that not necessarily a lot of people are familiar with. So what does that actually say about the broader economy? Yeah, you know, it definitely is one that people don't pay a lot of attention to because it's relatively small in the grand scheme of things to the American economy. We're looking at a $6 billion to $7 billion industry, and there's so many companies that are, are larger than that, even just in the manufacturing space. Uh, but companies tend to invest when they see a prospect for return in a three to five year period that they're looking to make their products for. Uh, so it probably gives you a little bit of an indication that they think things are going to start to slow down a little bit. And so it's, I think it's more of a reflection of where things are uh, at larger companies and what they're doing and what they're making product for, as opposed to leading the way any kind of way. It's just more of a reflection of what's happening in the broader economy. And you also mentioned we're pretty much in the seventh year of a seven to nine year cycle uh, of growth for right. this particular, for machine tools in particular. Um, what, what do you think is going to happen with that? Is there a downturn on the way? Is it just kind of flatness? Yeah, I think we're due for a bit of a, a contraction uh, in the machine tool market. That's not anything out of the ordinary. Uh, you can look at any economics kind of book or talk to an economist and they'll tell you that this industry is the classic case of a cyclical industry. So it's big moves up and it's big moves uh, down just by nature of what people are buying in a machine tool. Uh, so I think we're due for a little bit of a contraction. I'm not seeing anything where it's going to be drastic like it was in 2001 or 2009, uh, but pretty much a normal kind of kind of pause taking a breath in the industry, which unfortunately in this industry means 20 or 25 percent, but that's a normal uh, kind of contraction. And then it looks like we'll start resuming growth after a, kind of a year or two uh, lull here in the industry. And it's probably important to note this is a really cyclical kind of industry. Yes. Yeah, it's very, very cyclical. I mean, it's the classic case of a cyclical industry. And so we just have to be prepared as you're running a company in this industry. That's what you have to deal with. You have to figure out a way to balance that out and even out your your uh, profit and your em employment and your capabilities over a three to five year stretch as opposed to just planning on a consistent thing year after year. Sounds like some really good stuff. Well, yeah. thank you so much for your time today, Steve. Thanks, Penny. This has been Penny Brown with the MFG Advocate for IMTS-TV.